What an incredible crowd we have before us today. It doesn't matter how chilly it is outside because New Glasgow got it going on and the warmth in this room is evident. I must have, we have to give an incredible uh, extra round of applause uh, for Umoja, who you just heard on those drums. Umoja is a family affair. They are twins, Mariko and Matriko, and their sister Marisa Izzard. How phenomenal are they? Look at the talent we have amongst us. Yes. Minister Dunn, Mayor Dix, Mayor Husher, Mayor Ryan, Mayor White, Warden Parker, and everyone who has joined us here today, it is my pleasure to welcome you to the auspicious African Heritage Month 2023 official launch ceremony. My name is Deanna Mohammed, and I am the African Canadian Cultural Supports Advisor for the Nova Scotia Community College Pictou campus, and I am honored to be your MC for today. I would like to acknowledge that we are in Mi'kma'ki, the ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. This territory is covered by the treaties of peace and friendship, thus we are all treaty people. I would also like to acknowledge that racism is North America's original sin. That is at the root of all current social inequities. Acts of reconciliation and reparations, both symbolic and substantial, are critical to our collective emancipation and the ability to live peacefully and sustainably on this land. That quote was taken from the renowned Robert Wright. Today and every day, we need to acknowledge the histories, contributions, and legacies of African Nova Scotian people who have been here for over 400 years. At this time, I invite those who are able to rise for the singing of O Canada and the Black National Anthem, Lift Every Voice and Sing, sung by Kenyatta Boki, coming all the way from Upper Big Trachity. Kenyatta, please come forward. Oh, Canada. Our home and native land, true patron love, in all of us command, with glowing hearts we see thee rise, the true no strong and free. From far and wide, O oh Canada, we stand on God for thee. God keep our land, glorious and free. Oh Canada. Stand on God for thee. Oh, Canada, we stand on God for thee. Thank you. And please feel free to sing along with the Black National Anthem, Lift Every Voice, as well. Lift every voice and sing Till earth and heaven ring Ring with the harmonies of liberty let our rejoicing rise High as the listening sky 
sky Let it resound Loud as the rolling sea Sing a song Full of the faith that the dark past has taught us Sing a song Full of the hope that the present has brought us Facing the rising sun of our new day begun Let us march on till victory is won Thank you Super fantastic. Another round of applause for that vocal excellence. Thank you. Thank you. What a gift you have. Please bear with me. My, my notes are, uh, yeah, I've got to make sure I'm on, on talk here. What an incredible gift for all of us to, to be uh, blessed with, uh, with two beautiful renditions of O Canada and the Black National Anthem. At this time, I'm very happy to invite Mayor Nancy Dix of the town of New Glasgow to provide greetings and remarks. Thank you. Thanks, Deanna. And um, you know, I guess one of the most exciting things was to see Kenyatta's name on the program today. We had the honor of, uh, hear, I had the honor of hearing him for the first time um, during the opening of the uh, uh, Office of the Nova Scotia, African Nova Scotia's Affairs. And I, I, I couldn't believe, I thought, this, this guy is like real, like he's, he's really something else. And um, I, I think uh, we've been under a little bit of pressure on trying to say, you know, we've got some great things happening in Pictou County. Maybe you could move yourself down here with us. Anyway, um, I just wanted to say good morning to everyone, uh, Minister Dunn, Mayor Husher, Mayor Ryan, Mayor White, uh, Warden Parker, uh, and everyone else who's joined us this morning um, into this afternoon. I want to say a special thank you to the students, both from the academy and uh, the community college. You don't know how important it is and how special it is for us to see you here today. Um, this is something we hope you make a tradition of joining us every year. So it's a privilege to welcome everyone to the launch ceremony for African Heritage Month 2023. We are honored to have the uh, special occasion in our community and to be among Nova Scotia's designated African Nova Scotian communities. When I think about what makes our community special, a lot of different things come to mind. But the number one thing is our people. We are part of a community in which many people of African descent call home. They are people who have faced challenges, broken barriers, and found triumphant success in our community for hundreds of years. The provincial theme for African Heritage Month Seas of Struggle, African People from Shore to Shore, speaks to the challenges people of African descent faced from the shores of Africa to the shores of Nova Scotia. It reminds us, like the waves of our shores, the strength and resilience shown by our African Nova Scotia community for generations. African Heritage Month is a time to listen and learn from the African Nova Scotian community as well as celebrate and highlight their culture. It is a time to reflect on the struggles they faced to get where we are today. When we learn about the history, it allows us to continue down a path where all people are treated with dignity and respect. Let's today launch, inspire all of us to go along the path consciously and with intention. Let it also be a chance for everyone to celebrate the culture and accomplishments of those from our African Nova Scotian community. Thank you all again for being here.
thank you so very much, uh, Mayor Dix. I would la now like to call upon uh, Deacon Brian Bowden for the opening prayer. In Afrocentric practices, it is always of the utmost importance to hear our community elders speak and share messages through prayer. Our community has always been and forever will be anchored and grounded in spirituality. Deacon Brian, please come forward. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. It's my pleasure to give the opening prayer. And I would like to, uh, at this time, ask you to all stand. I would like for us to pause for a few moments just to remember those who are not with us this year, those who have passed on to glory, and that we would remember their presence with us in days gone by. Just for a few moments, let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this time that we can celebrate the launch of 2023 from sea to sea, from shore to shore. We thank you for this theme, and we thank you that you have, as the national anthem resounds with all the struggles that have been taking place. We thank you that you have been in our midst to it all, and that you are able to see us through all these struggles that we face. We ask now that you bless the, the ceremony today and all that participate in the ceremony. We thank you for the youth that are here today and for their input into this celebration. We do trust that you would raise up youth that would continue on when the elders are not with them anymore, that they would remember also their creator in the days of their youth, and that is you, Lord. We pray now that you bless all that takes place here and that your blessing will be upon all that is said and done through thine honor and to thy glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much, Deacon Brian. I will now invite Mayor Nancy Dix back to the podium for the reading and signing of the African Heritage Month Proclamation. The Honorable Pat Dunn will also join uh, Mayor Dix in the signing of that proclamation. Following this, Mayor Dix and Crystal States from the Office of African Nova Scotian Affairs will unveil the 2023 Provincial African Heritage Month poster. Crystal States will also be providing us with a very detailed and lovely explanation for this year's poster. Mayor. Hold it up a little closer here. Proclamation in celebration of African Heritage Month 2023. Seas of struggle. Africans, African peoples from shore to shore. Whereas the Government of Canada has, observed, has declared February as African History Month, Heritage Month, whereas people of African ancestry contributed significantly and positively to the shaping of our Canadian society for 130 years, whereas people of African ancestry have been residents of Nova Scotia for more than 400 years, whereas the General Assembly of the United Nations designated 2015 to 2024 as the International Decade for People of African Descent, whereas the town of New Glasgow is provincially recognized as one of the more than 50 African Nova Scotia communities in the province of Nova Scotia, 
whereas the town of New Glasgow values and celebrates the rich cultu cultural diversity of its community and salutes the sacrifice and leadership of our African Nova Scotia citizens of New Glasgow, Pictou County, and across Nova Scotia. Therefore, I, Mayor Nancy Dix, the town of New Glasgow, do hereby proclaim the month of February 2023 as African Heritage Month in recognition of the achievements and legacy of the African Nova Scotia community, while also looking forward to future greatness. We will strive to promote awareness, knowledge, and understanding among all people while furthering pride, dignity, and inspiration in those who identify with African heritage. Constable Brent Bowden and, and Sergeant Daryl Paris, if, you, if people would like to maybe possibly stay and have a little picture, we would like them to join us here uh, uh, as well. We are very proud of our officers in blue. Hey, so celebrate African Heritage Month 2023, sharing the history and culture of African Nova Scotians. This year's African Heritage Month provincial theme, Seas of Struggle, African Peoples from Shore to Shore, outlines the struggles people of African descent faced from the shores of Africa to the shores of Nova Scotia. Recognizing that the one thing that has remained constant in our history is the Atlantic Ocean. The long-standing history of people of African descent in the development of Canada, the sea has played a vital role. This theme explores the struggle and adversity that was overcome and examines the effects of slavery and the seafaring of African Nova Scotians. The theme also aligns with the United Nations International Decade for People of African Descent, DPAD, from 2015 to 2024. The goal of DPAD is to strengthen global cooperation in support of peoples of African descent, increase awareness and the passage towards presence in all aspects of society. Nova Scotia has 52 historic African Nova Scotian communities with a long, deep, and complex history dating back over 200 years. African Heritage Month provides us another opportunity to celebrate our culture, our legacy, achievements, and the contributions of our people, past and present. Now, a bit about the African Heritage Month um, Information Network. Last fall, the African Heritage Month Network, we held a contest asking for theme ideas for the 2023 um, poster, African Heritage Month poster. So there were lots and lots of suggestions that uh, came in, which was, of course, challenging for the network. And so, however, we managed to narrow down, I think, to two, and then we merged two of the submissions to come up with the theme, Seas of Struggle, um, African peoples from shore to shore. And so the African um, Heritage Month Information Network, uh, it's a partnership between the African Nova Scotian Affairs, the Black Cultural Center Society, 
the African Nova Scotian Music Association, the African Heritage Month Southwest Network, the Black History Month Association, the Cumberland African Nova Scotian Association, the Valley African Nova Scotia, African Nova Scotia Development Association, the Halifax Regional Municipality, and the African Nova Scotian Integration Office, the, oh, and Guysboro and Kinnish Strait African Regional Network. And there is the Northeast, Northeastern Network as well, um, which was me, but now it has to be replaced by somebody else, so Central Nova. Each year, we produce an educational poster which is distributed and displayed in our community gathering centers, schools, churches, government offices, and businesses. So at this time, I want to thank the network all right across the province, and a huge thank you to Paul Adams, Jr., who, through his artistic ability, and, and he's been doing this for several years, he's able to bring the theme that we suggest he brings the theme to life, thus giving us an, an African Heritage Month um, poster. So. Beautiful, beautiful, Crystal. Thank you. Thank you very much. And for those of you who are very interested, which I'm sure many of you are, in getting a poster. Those posters will be available for you at the end of today's uh, event, so uh, yeah. You hear all the little, the pitter-patter of the feet going up. We are in for a treat. We are, actually we have been in for major treats today in regards to the musical ability, the uh, musical talent uh, here within Pictou County and beyond, of course, from Upper Big Trackety too. Okay, so um, how y'all feeling? You feeling good? You okay? All right, all right, we like that. All right, I am pleased, I'm so pleased to welcome the New Glasgow Academy Jazz Band under the direction of Steve Hartland, who will be playing the song Little Sunflower by Freddie Hubbard, who is well known as an African-American jazz trumpeter. Steve and the Jazz Band, take it away.
they fabulous? Oh, gracious. Thank you so much, New Glasgow Academy Jazz Band, and a special thanks to all of the soloists. Adid Rahman, Janine Maslama, Charlie Smith, Sarah McKinnon, Ben Thompson, and Victoria Robertson. Thank you so much. At this time, we will be showing a video greetings from our MLA and Premier of Nova Scotia, the Honorable Tim Houston. Our province is proud to recognize the contributions, culture, and history of African Nova Scotians and people of African descent. African Nova Scotia history has been rooted in Nova Scotia for over 400 years. And we must remember that this is our shared Nova Scotia history. Diversity, inclusion, and equity are fundamental to our collective growth and prosperity. We are committed to working with all Nova Scotians to build a stronger, more prosperous province. Learning from our past and acknowledging the present will help us move forward for a better future. I want to thank African Nova Scotian communities, the African Heritage Month Information Network, and the Office of African Nova Scotia Affairs under the leadership of Associate Deputy Duane Provo for continuing to bring African Heritage Month celebrations to life across the province. It's now my honour to read the proclamation for African Heritage Month. Whereas February is African Heritage Month, a time to celebrate the culture, legacy, achievements and contributions of people of African descent in the province of Nova Scotia, past, present and whereas this year's theme, Seas of Struggle, African peoples from shore to shore recognizes the resiliency, strength and determination of people of African descent from the shores of Africa to the shores of Nova Scotia with the Atlantic Ocean being, ever, being the everlasting connection. And whereas African Heritage Month provides an opportunity for all Nova Scotians to learn about the complex history of African Nova Scotia communities dating back more than 400 years, therefore I, Tim Houston, Premier of Nova Scotia, do hereby proclaim the month of February 2023 to be African Heritage Month in the province of Nova Scotia. Thank you. Thank you to Premier Houston. I will now invite the Honorable Pat Dunn, MLA for Picto Centre and Minister of African Nova Scotian Affairs to bring remarks. Good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> Back when the uh, official opening of the uh, ANZA office here in the Glasgow I had the delight to listen to that beautiful singer from Upper Big Tragedy. In speaking with him afterwards, he said, uh, oh, all my neighbors know me. I'm outside around. I'm, I'm singing all the time. So, so I told him the next time I'm going through Upper Big Tragedy, I'm going to have my windows down. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Deanna. The, uh, I think uh, it could only be right for me to say we're giving rounds of applause. I mean, you, you can't find a better MC than Deanna Mohammed. <laughs> You're a rock star. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, uh, mayors and uh, councillors, uh, regional police, the, uh, of course, I, I bring regrets from the Premier, uh, you just saw on the screen. He's in a very important critical meeting just as we sit here, and I bring regrets from uh, Associate Deputy Minister uh, Dwayne Provo. There's two functions on right now, one in Digby, one here in Glasgow. So when uh, Dwayne and I were talking about it, uh, one of us ha had to be somewhere while well, I said, Dwayne, I know where I'm going to be. <laughs> so you don't have much of an option. <laughs> but uh, anyway, the um, so yeah, we, we've been really busy in the office, office of African uh, Nova Scotia Affairs for the you know past many 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 months. Um, uh, just recently on Friday, I was at Center 200 in Sydney for the uh, proclamation uh, in that community. Uh, Saturday night, I was at the uh, gala at uh, in Member Two. Uh, you know, there was 
over 550 people at that uh, gala that night, Saturday night. Just a tremendous crowd. And everyone with a smile on their face, you know, following <laughs> what we went through the last two and a half years in wonder. But uh, it was a great, great event. And then on Monday, I was in North Preston for, uh, for the pro uh, proclamation there. However, this is the best one, okay? <laughs> I, have a, I have attended many of these here as the MLA. Never thought I'd have the opportunity to, to, uh, to attend it as the Minister of African Nova, uh, Nova Scotia Affairs. So the other thing, too, is um, some of you know, when, when uh, ministers are out to various events, whatever it might be, economic development, uh, natural resources, whatever, communications people in the department write, uh, write notes for you. Uh, a couple of days ago in Halifax, uh, they were preparing, you know, notes for me and words for me, and I said, don't bother. I said, I'm going to sit down tonight and write my own and see, see how they sound. So I didn't, I didn't bring my script to the uh, communications people because I thought they'd probably tear it apart. But, <laughs> but anyway, it's, uh, again, great, great pleasure to be here uh, uh, in this uh, African Heritage Month celebration. The, um, so during the month of February, we celebrate the many achievements and contributions of African Nova Scotians and African Nova Scotian communities who, throughout history, have been vital in creating a culturally diverse, compassionate, and beautiful Nova Scotia. African Heritage Month illustrates a special time of re remembrance, resilience, reflection, and re recommitment it's a time to celebrate in meaningful ways the history of more than 400 years of people of African descent in the province of Nova Scotia. As mentioned earlier, this year's theme, Seas of Struggle, African Peoples from Shore to Shore, is a timely one. And time doesn't permit to make more reference to that with the seafaring project uh, that's be occurring uh, later on in the uh, spring. It recognizes the resilience, strength, and determination of people of African descent from the shores of Africa to the shores of Nova Scotia, with the Atlantic Ocean being the everlasting connection. We must continue to open doors and ensure they remain open so that others can pass through and succeed. It is necessary to provide the tools and opportunities for African Nova Scotians to succeed African Nova Scotians must have access to equitable job opportunities, educational pursuits, management opportunities, community leadership, and the opportunities to contribute as valuable decision makers. It matters that people get to see themselves in places of leadership with the authority to create change. We must allow decisions to come from communities, not from outside decision makers. It's important that people don't feel excluded from conversations about decisions that affect them and their communities. Everyone has a duty to know our collective past and honor it, to engage our present and improve it, and to create a whole new future. It is not right to simply participate in African Heritage Month events and festivities that honor the legacy of African Nova Scotians and their communities and forget about their valuable contribution during the rest of the year. I encourage you throughout every month of the year to explore the organizations and resources that are available to prom promote awareness of African heritage in Nova Scotia and for that matter across Canada. Learn about the impact that African Nova Scotian women's organizations have had on their community and how they advance, advance equality and human rights. Read the biographies of notable African Nova Scotians who helped shape the problems of Nova Scotia. Cultural diversity helps us recognize and respect ways that are not necessarily our own. If we interact with others, listen to others, understand others, we can build bridges to trust, respect, and understanding. My hope for the future 
is that society is as in inclusive as it possibly can be. Thank you. Sage advice, let us heed it. Thank you very much, Minister Dunn. I will now invite Warden Parker, Robert Parker, of the Municipality of the County of Pictou to give remarks. Thank you, Deanna. And uh, to all uh, people here today of, of African Nova Scotia or African descent, and to Minister Dunn and my fellow uh, municipal leaders, and to all the young people that are here especially today. And uh, I just want to say thank you so much for the music. From the time I became warden in 2016, this is probably the, the peak event that I attend all year because it's so well done. Uh, and I would second what Minister Dunn said about having a rock star doing our <laughs> MC in. Uh, it, it's just so well done. I mean, the, between the, the music and the, just the whole, so well organized, the flow of it and everything. So I'm uh, always pleased to uh, be here and, and say a few words. Now, some people might interpret the word few differently than I do, but uh, you'll be pleased to know I only have one page anyway. But they, they might be chapter headings. Uh, so... Uh, I always like to start out with a little bit of history, and some of the, I hope I don't offend anybody by what I say, but um, when I was uh, about 65 years younger, uh, and we lived out in the country, and we went to a country school, one-room country school, and my father uh, at the time was working, well, I could throw a stone from here to the meat store that was right across the, the road here, eventually became a parts store, but so the only time we got to come to town was about twice a year, uh, one was Christmas shopping, I remember, and the streets were just packed in here. But uh, because of where we lived and because of the school we were in and everything, I had never seen a black person. So when we came to town, that was different to us. And I remember my father telling us uh, not to stare. Uh, and, and he was telling us in, in all honesty that because when you see what you've never seen before, there's a tendency to do that. So over the years, I've, I've learned a lot more about uh, New Glasgow and about the African Nova Scotia community in New Glasgow. And I've come to uh, have a great deal of respect for what the African Nova Scotia community adds to New Glasgow. I think it makes it a whole different place. I think if it was just all white people living here, it, it wouldn't be the same place, not at all. So much has been added. Uh, from, from this community, and uh, I just have great respect uh, for uh, the black community or African Nova Scotia community uh, in the Glasgow. So I want to say that first. Um, so when I'm getting something ready to write or thinking about, you know, I'm going to that this day, and so it's mulling around up here in your head and what, what I want to talk about. So there was mention here earlier about spirituality before Deacon Bowden, uh, got Brian Bowden got up. Uh, so I'm a big believer in spirituality, and uh, I figure, well, God will put something in my mind before the time. Uh, and uh, so yesterday afternoon, I was thinking, you're, you're running a little late. Uh, I'm going to need something before long, you know. Uh, I can't trust just getting up there and not uh, having some thoughts in my mind. So I, I'm a big one for watching the news, so the news, CBC News, came on last night, and they said, well, because this is African Nova Scotia Heritage Month, there's going to be uh, every night or pretty every night on the news, they're going to talk about black change makers in Nova Scotia, or actually not just Nova Scotia, in the four Atlantic provinces. So I got thinking about that some, and I said, well, I'll go. they gave a website or something. I'll go on and check that out. So uh, I did, and I figured, ah, he finally came through. <laughs> because I, I looked at all the names that were on there. They said there was 161 names sent in, and they had to pick 20. They had to narrow it down to 20. Well, I went through those 20, uh, and they were all, you know, done significant things, uh, but I didn't think any more than what people had done around here. But I didn't notice any from Pictou County. I may, have, I may have overlooked. I don't know. But anyway, so I decided I would come up with my own list of black change makers, 
Uh, they're not necessarily all lived in Pictor County, but they certainly had an influence on New Glasgow in particular and on Pictor County. So I'm just going to go through that list briefly. Um, so at the top of the list, I put well-known Viola Desmond. And of course, we all know her now. We take $10 bill out. We know what she looks like too. Uh, but uh, one of the big things I admire about Viola Desmond is that she was an entrepreneur. That often gets missed. It's, it's what she did and how she stood up for people uh, from the black community and whatnot. But as an entrepreneur, back then in, I don't know, it was the early 50s, whatever it was, uh, you know, for her to be doing what she was doing, she was selling beauty products and she was running her own shop. And she, she was a, an entrepreneur. And I know we have many today, but I mean, she was a, uh, at a very early time, was out there. That's why she ended up here in the Glasgow that night, because she was, you know, selling her products, uh, much like people travel the roads today. So the second one on my list is Carrie Best, of course, well-known uh, for a uh, newspaper and, and a writer and a business leader, right from this community. Uh, no longer with us, of course, but uh, set the way for many others. Another one who we just lost uh, this past year is Francis Dorrington. I think Francis was a change maker. Any time that I knew Francis was back when I wasn't on council, I was on the school board. But uh, and of course, his daughters uh, were are on the council today. One of them, and uh, and were very involved in education. So I, I got to know them quite well and got to know Francis some. I want to mention Henderson Paris, run against racism and all the things that he did uh, to highlight the need. Uh, for us all to get along and all see each other and see the good in each other. So thank you, Henderson. Um, a person I got to know personally quite well, and I've mentioned here before sometimes, is, uh, I call him Johnny, but John Reddick. Uh, and uh, he, I, I really got to know him because he was working for my father to build a, uh, a fireplace with stone that my father had picked out all around the fireplace, and he got the stone from all over Nova Scotia. And Johnny was just so particular in how he laid those stones out, you know, so they looked the best they could. And uh, I still see those today. I sit down and watch my TV, there's, a, you know, right in front of me. So I often remember, uh, remember Johnny. Uh, and with us here today, I'm proud to say uh, Brian Bowden is a person I have a lot of respect for. Uh, and particularly, we worked together on Viola's Place for the homeless, but in a lot of other different ways. I know he... Uh, brings a lot to, uh, to our community, to our county. Uh, and a final lady that I've known for quite a while too, uh, Crystal States. And uh, we knew each other way back in school board days too, back in the uh, 90s, uh, when we still had a school board office here, or we even still had a school board. <laughs> the, uh, so uh, I know she's worked very hard to uh, improve uh, educational opportunities uh, for those uh, particularly those from the black community, but for all students, uh, she's done excellent work. Now, this list isn't meant to be all-inclusive, so I'm sorry for the ones I've missed. Whenever you name somebody, you know, you're in danger of the ones you missed, but these are people who, some of them who I knew, and some of them who I just have a lot of, uh, a lot of respect for. Now, I have a few quotes here uh, that I want to quickly read. I got these off of that site, those 20 people who... Uh, were there, and I just thought they all kind of hit home with me anyway. The first one says, you are just the product of circumstances, but you are responsible for changing those circumstances. That was uh, Clyde Ray, and I believe he's from uh, New Brunswick. Second one I wrote down was, my belief is always that, you know, to always turn weaknesses and challenges into opportunities and strengths. So far I can think of something then I can do it. And that was Doyen Somerin. Probably pronounced the name wrong. Uh, and the third one was, that's probably what I can do to make change, is just to ha hear people, validate people, try and get change one person at a time, one step at a time, one policy at a time. Thank you all. Thank you so very much, uh, Warden Parker. I will say that you did share with us that your uh, speech was about one page. 
with, with all the additional ad lib, I think I'd make it around three. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. I'm pleased to once again welcome the New Glasgow Academy Jazz Band, who will be playing Watermelon Man by African-American musical genius, Herbie Hancock. Solos are being performed by Tristan Curry Atwater, Ashton Pitts, Noelle Budge, and Jillian Mummery. Take it away.
I can see the, the food is anxiously waiting for it to be partaken of all the folks that are here today. But I have a few uh, remarks before we get there. I promise we're, we're getting there. I hope you truly enjoyed yourselves today. <laughs> and I hope over our time together that you've had time to reflect about the significance of the day and reflect on the words that were spoken. We are here at this place and at this time because we stand on the shoulders of our ancestors, many of whom lay in their graves with dreams, hopes, and wishes unfulfilled because of the mental illness of racism and discrimination. And yet, we are still here and we rise with the DNA of them in our bodies. We are their wildest dreams come true. There are many African Nova Scotian kings and queens that have passed on in recent years, and also many who are currently right here, right now, in our midst. I want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your work, your leadership, your example, your sacrifices, which have been many, so that we can be here together today in fellowship, in intercommunity connection, in collaboration, in solidarity together to honor the history, heritage, and our future. At this time, we will watch a video of the raising of the Pan-African flag, which unites all people of African ancestry throughout the diaspora from shore to shore to shore. Would I please, I would please like to ask Umoja to come forward and play the beautiful African drums as the video is being shown of the flag raising. Umoja, thank you. Moja, please rise. Please rise. Get your get your flowers. You're amazing.
Mariko, Mertrico, and Marisa Izzard. Umoja. Umoja in Swahili means unity. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you all for joining us today, and we encourage you to stay for the reception right here in the main theater. But before you partake of the food, which has been beautifully prepared for us by Pantry Kitchen, I will invite Deacon Brian Bowden to return to the podium for the blessing of the food. Stand, please stand, as Deacon Brian had urged us earlier to stand in prayer together. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for all that you have provided for us, and now we ask that you bless the food that has been prepared for our nourishment, that as we partake, may we be mindful of the needs of others, and that we be thankful in all that we do. Bless us now as we depart and go our separate ways. May we carry what we have learned here today, and be blessed. Amen. That concludes today's ceremony. Once again, I encourage you all to stay for the reception. A huge round of applause for the town of New Glasgow. You guys are known how to doing it right. You got it doing it right. And to the Office of African Nova Scotian Affairs and all of the people that have collaborated today to make today possible, thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a wonderful and blessed day. Take care.